This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Gamefly. Coming up on Destructoid, Halo 4 shows off some brand new gameplay of Halo 4. Remember Me reveals its combat system where you kick some people and also Half-Life 3, you guys, Half-Life 3. All that and more right now on Destructoid Live. Welcome to Destructoid. I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville. Welcome back, Max! I'm so glad to be back! <gasps> How was uh, Boston? I can't tell you anything about it. Really? It's all a secret. But nobody's watching right now. No I one's mean, watching we're not our live show. Or... Did, no, no, um... did one of your tattoos rub off? No, no, no. Uh, I actually I put on temporary tattoos while I was there. Oh, okay. I brought some. Right. Those were the ones you gave me a while back when you went to Texas ah. of lions and tigers. Me and my buddy Alex Rubens, we were in the hotel bathroom. We were just putting on tattoos. He took the tigers and I took the lions. And then we went downstairs and everybody thought we were really stupid. So yeah. we're going to have full coverage of work, Assassin's everyone. Creed 3 next week. I swear I did my yes. work really good. Yeah, but, I'm sure um, you did. Yeah, what do we have today? Uh, we have lots of things. What do we do uh, here? Not the I least forgot. of which is a contest, since it is a Friday after all, and we love you so much. Uh, we've got two codes actually to give away for the latest Humble Indie Bundle that has six games in it, including the original Torchlight, which is $15 on Steam. So that's alone right there is worth it. And also the second one just came out, so if you haven't played that yet, you should. Uh, also comes with Vessel, Rochard, Shatter, Spaz, and Dust Force. Uh, those codes were graciously donated by Tony G from Chicago, and uh, he paid more than the average donation price, so you guys get that sixth game, that's Dust good. Force, for free, which is great. That, that list of games is actually like a list of my friends' nicknames. Really? Yeah. That's sad. Shatter, Spaz, Vessel, and Dust Force. I love you guys. Jesus Christ. I'm kidding. Um, all you need to do to win a code is tweet, I'm watching at Detoid Show live on www.youtube.com slash Detoid for a chance to win a Humble Indie Bundle. And then we will pick two winners and announce them at the end of the show. And if you are not watching this live, ignore everything I just said. Except, welcome to Destructor I'm Tara Long. And welcome back, Max, because I of really things. do. I missed you. Yeah. So bad. Don't get weird with it. So bad. All right. Okay, so you know what? It, it is good to be back. I missed you guys, and you were so good while I was gone. You didn't mess up the furniture or have any house parties that I'm aware of. So as a special treat, I'm going to report on some rampant speculation about Half-Life 3. That's right, you guys, rampant speculation. This tip comes by way of the French site Le Journal de Gamma, which reported on an anonymous tip that claims that Valve's much-anticipated third entry in the Half-Life series is going to be an open-world game. <gasps> right? That's so this open-world gameplay is supposed to include NPCs and RPG-like quests, and according to this mysterious tipster, the game has been influenced heavily by the Elder Scrolls games. Hmm. Though that's just probably the, the first you know open world game that comes to mind when thinking about them. Now obviously this is a huge departure from Valve's usually linear games and apparently Half-Life 3's development has been slowed down a couple overhauls to the gameplay style. They, um, they tried making it a pure sh shooter first and that wasn't really what they wanted. And then they tried making sort of like an FPS that had a focus on puzzles and exploration and that didn't really work so. Uh, it's almost like there's a ton of pressure riding on this. Yeah, it's like some people want this game to come out and they're just like, you know, protesting know on Valve's lawn and stuff. That actually happened. Some people were protesting on uh, the front front lawn I don't of Valve. Doubt it. Gabe Newell went out with the hose and was like, get out of here, you <laughs> dumb kids. And then they all um, got So that's out. it. That's the anonymous tip about Half-Life 3 that could, could turn out to be total bullshit. But hey, it is fun to think about it. And it really is. If you were watching us live, you should say things in the chat about Half-Life 3, what you think it's about. Go say it. I hope that Gordon, Gordon Freeman gets time traveled back in time travel and he has to go to medieval times. And it's, they just, they could just patch Gordon Freeman into Skyrim oh, and be like, here's our new game. I would like to see Gordon Freeman at Medieval Times, the show, because I yeah. think that would be really awesome. And also, I love Medieval Times. Good. Yeah, so speaking of games that we haven't heard much about lately, who's up for some brand new Halo 4 gameplay, everyone? Uh, Destructoid's Jordan DeVore recently got a chance to visit 343 Studios up in Kirkland, Washington, and he went hands-on with the first few missions of the campaign, which picks up right where Halo 3 left off, after Master Chief has awoken from cryosleep aboard the UNSC Forward Unto Dawn. So right away we get to see a really cool climbing sequence, which may hint at some more diverse first-person activities. Hmm? After waking up, his ship is, of course, immediately mobbed with enemies, and the fight eventually moves outside, where he tries to find an escape pod before the ship gets sucked into a nearby planet's gravitational force. 
So that kind of marks the beginning of the third mission in the game, which is called Forerunner, in which they land on said nearby planet. And that's when they get introduced to one of the game's new enemy races, the Prometheans. Jordan likened this level to the planet Talon 4 from Metroid Prime. He said that while, the fir while Halo 4's first two missions felt kind of like that classic linear first person sh shooter level you'd come to expect from Halo, this one really gives more of a exploring an alien world vibe. And as for its inhabitants, the Prometheans, Jordan says that they are an intimidating yet incredibly satisfying race to fight. He also added that their guns, which you might recall from a trailer, one of the first Halo 4 trailers I think, they kind of form to your hand when you pick them up and shape shift, yeah. which is so cool looking. Um, and he also said uh, that they're going to be some really good shotguns and sniper rifles especially. So if you're so, nearsighted or farsighted, you're going to love these I love guns. me a good sniper rifle, so I'm not complaining. Um, you'll also notice some really badass melee attacks in this footage. And of course it wouldn't be Halo without vehicles, so here we get to see Chief cruising around in a ghost and a banshee. So yeah, there's that. In addition to the campaign, Jordan also got to play around with the first couple Spartan Ops missions. This is the new co-op mode that's replacing Firefight. It's basically a series of short sandbox style levels with a basic objective and up to four players can complete that together while fighting enemies. Uh, 343 plans to release 50 of these Spartan Ops missions in total. They're gonna release five every week for a period of 10 weeks after the game comes out. It's gonna be totally free, so you won't have to pay anything, and it will have an overarching narrative that also ties in with the campaign story. Last but not least, Jordan got to check out the new multiplayer War Games, which contains three different modes. There's the Regicide mode, which is a variant of Deathmatch where the top scoring player has a bounty placed on their head and then everybody else is out to get him, and he gets, the longer you stay alive, the more points you accumulate. <clears throat> There's also a capture the flag mode, which Jordan says is amazingly fun, um, but his personal favorite was the Dominion mode, which is a mode where teams kind of fight to gain control over three separate bases. Overall, he really enjoyed his time with Halo 4. He said both the multiplayer and the campaign are looking great, and he's now got way more confidence in 343's ability to deliver a solid but unique narrative. You guys can read his full preview over on Destructoid.com. There is a ton of info in there, way more than I could say on this show. Um, he's, al he's also got some descriptions of some of the new weapon types. So if you are a seasoned Halo fan, you will definitely want to read that and see see what this one has to offer. It's looking really good, I gotta say. Yeah. Like, it looks awesome. That shape-shifting thing blew my mind. It's a gun that turns into little squares and you like All games should have that. Lego gun. It's crazy. They're starting a trend. I don't know. I can feel it now. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I'm sure it's gonna be like a great game. I just, I'm, I've never been like super into the Halo series and it's just... Yeah, it's... Yeah. I'm, it's, curi I'm curious to check it you out. You gotta be into I'm, multiplayer I'm stuff, interested you know? in the in the climbing. I, I very much am interested in what they do with the climbing sequences. I, I hear that's very exciting for people who like ladders. So if you guys uh, have heard about the Tokyo Game Show, the Tokyo Game Show has been going on this week, and with it, we've seen some announcements from the Japanese end of the gaming industry. Probably the coolest thing I've seen so far is a new trailer for Metal Gear Rising Revengeance that actually gives us a sense of what is going to be in the game, besides a lot of violence and watermelons and Depeche Mode songs. What more do you need? Right? But there is more. Robot dogs. So if you're excited about this game, I really do recommend going and checking out this full trailer yourself. It's like six minutes long, and it's just full of little tiny details and tidbits and, you know, dialogue that makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, but let's let's take a look at a few highlights. For starters, we see Raiden getting dumped out of this sort of stealth bomber thing, and they're like, hey Raiden, you're late for school. Splash! And he's like, just gets shot out like a torpedo. Sort of like how they, they dunk, uh, you know, snakes in a, snake in a torpedo at the beginning of Metal Gear Solid 1. That's a, a great way to deliver things. We get a look at this sort of team that's gonna be working at the home end of things. You've got this guy uh, who looks sort of like Exhibit, and then you've got um, the little blonde girl who, it's very possible, that that's um, that's Sunny from MGS4. This takes place, uh, you know, nine years after four, and Sunny would probably be about that age right now. And apparently, the voice actress who did the voice of Sunny in MGS4 confirmed that she was working on Rising. So, let your you know conspiracy theories commence. And also, that character would be legal now, you perverts. A few bosses get shown off. There's the guy with the ponytail who we've seen in previous trailers. I don't like him. He just, he looks like a, he doesn't look like a Metal Gear character. He's just too, too out there. He's just got a dumb, like, shoulder pauldron, whatever. Then there's that guy, who I kind of do like, because he looks scary, and he's like, I'm a, you're the president, I'm mean to you, Mr. President. And then he's like, 
you know, holding up a big crazy knife that looks like the, you know, the big buster sword. Uh, and then of course there's a robot dog. God, I want to see the oh, robot dog. I forgot about the robot. He's dog. got a chainsaw tail. We've seen him before, but there's a, a shot in the new trailer where he's riding in a car. Then there's this lady who's just like taking the arms off of scarabs. Uh, and then plugging them into herself, so she's like, Mecha Shiva, Mecha Shiva, and then I bet you in that boss fight, those little balls are gonna roll around and blow up and you're gonna have to dodge them. Um, what else do we have? Then I've got this guy who looks just like a regular ass ninja, and then he jumps off and all of a sudden he turns into Vector Man, Ooh. and his body is made up of weird little chunks, which is creepy. Um, I think the best part of the trailer is when Raiden plugs one of the scarabs into his neck and then sort of starts remotely controlling it. This is awesome. Look at this. He's like, be my eyes, gross little okay, that's creepy. wiggle woggle. Yeah, so I, I guess there's going to be some, uh, some stealthy segments where you control one of these guys. And uh, there's, some, there's some dumb dialogue. I think he says something about how he likes stabbing. The best part is this, though, at the very end. Adios, muchachos. Oh my god. And then he goes into the sewer, because apparently he's a ninja turtle, or I don't know. Um, so yeah, this is, um, this is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. <laughs> It, it looks very much like a bunch of ridiculousness, and uh, who knows what's going to happen. I think it looks really stupid. This game uh, but is like a parody really of itself. Yeah, actually, uh, Conrad Zimmerman, uh, he, he played a bunch of it, and he wrote up his impressions. Uh, you can read that over on Destructoid.com, which you should do, because words are good for you. <sighs> oh, well. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. That game gets more ridiculous the more I see of it. Um, why don't we talk about a game that I'm super excited about, which is Remember Me. Um, Capcom just released another six minutes of footage, and this one focuses on the game's combat system, which is mostly melee-based, and it's, it's kind of centered around something called a combo lab, which represents Neelan's fighting memory. So as she progresses through the game and begins to sort of piece together what happened before her memory got wiped, she also starts to relearn these things called pressons, which are abilities that she can string together to create really powerful and customizable combo moves. Look, she's so they, pressing Y right there. Oh, uh -huh, <laughs> yeah, that's probably why they did that, actually. Um, although the game was made by a bunch of French people, so who knows. Uh, there's four pressons um, in the game. There's regen, which regenerates your health and deals a small amount of damage. There's also power, which deals heavy damage and triggers finishing moves. There's cooldown, which deals a small amount of damage and reduces the cool tap cooldown time of your S pressons, which are special pressons, which I will explain in a moment. Christmas pressons. Yes. And then uh, there's the chain move, which duplicates whatever the previous presson was and then doubles the amount of damage that inflicts, and that kind of compounds over time. Uh, so you'll be able to create over 50,000 different combinations with just those four pressons, and they show a few examples of them in the video. You can see in the beginning, um, when she starts fighting, there are kind of some glitches on the screen that indicate her health is low. So uh, what the guy does is he goes into the menu system and creates a health regen combo by stringing together four of the regen presses. And that way, every time she deals a hit, she'll gain life. Of course, uh, that combo deals very little damage, so it's not an effective long-term strategy. So they go back into the combo lab and uh, they create a new one with a couple power pressings mixed in, and that's the one that deals heavy damage. So when you combine that with the health regen, uh, it, it deals damage, but it also keeps her alive. And you can see on the bottom of the screen while she's fighting that it'll show the combo moves and it'll show when she presses them, which is kind of cool. Um, so if you create something with like six moves in it, you don't have to exactly remember them all. Uh, pretty soon some guys with shields come in to fight her and uh, the regular pressings just don't work on them. So she has to use one of her S pressings, which I mentioned earlier. There's five of these. She's expressing herself. Yeah, um, we actually saw these in a previous trailer. It was that little ability wheel that she pulls up. Well, that's her wheel of S pressings. And so here you can see her using a logic bomb, which she uses to knock them back and kind of get rid of their shields. And then she's able to use her regular uh, combos to actually kill the guys. Um, which is pretty cool. There's also flying robots in the game, just 
because why not? Uh, they're called Seraphims, and they will just continuously shoot at you and disrupt all of your combo moves while you're fighting humans. So you have to take those guys out first, and what she does is she uses another one of her S pressings, the Rust in Pieces one, which, oh. will, which will turn any robot into an ally that will then fight on your side. Why? So it just starts shooting the bad guys. Why would it mean, that's like the worst name. Don't ask questions. Uh, so there's a lot of strategy involved here since each enemy has different weaknesses and strengths and abilities and for people who don't like to fiddle around in menu systems mid-combat, there's also going to be an auto-fill option that creates combos for you. So yeah, that's combat and remember me, I am really fucking excited for this game and also a little bit concerned about how it'll all actually play out, but mostly really fucking excited. That's like a crafting system for hitting people. It's it's really cool. I haven't uh, seen anything like that in the game before. I haven't heard you say a nerdy a nerdy news story that nerdy in a while. Really? That's like, not even that And then nerdy. the S-Pressons co-op and it's rust in pieces, but don't worry, there's autofill combat in there. Wow. I, I listen cool. to some of the words. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, uh, do we have some, some questions, I think? Anything um, good? Let's see, Gatsu Rage says, Half-Life 3 should be out for the next-gen consoles for sure. That's what they oh, said yeah. about Duke Nukem Forever back well, in 1998. Well, as long as it comes out in the next 11 so. years, it will be. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Megatron 99, he says, here's my guess. They will give Gordon Freeman a voice, and he will sound like a baby. That would be the funniest thing. That just, would be weird if you could Gordon change Freeman his voice. Just Gordon Freeman just going up to people. They're like, Gordon, we need your help. There's a bunch of head crabs, and they're coming out of boxes. Only you can help. And he's just like, ah! <laughs> Somebody specifically said that so you would do your best baby impression. Yeah, baby voices are Did funny. not disappoint. Why don't we take a second to thank our sponsor, and then we've got more news to discuss, and then we can get to the other questions. Okay. Fine. We can all agree that we like video games, right? Everyone here? Raise, yeah. raise of hands. No. Yeah. If you're like us and you like video games, then there is no excuse to not try Gamefly. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service with a selection of over 8,000 games, new and classic, for whatever console or handheld you own. Gamefly's plans start at only $15.95 a month, and members can rent up to four games at a time, keep them for as long as they like, there are no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. Not a bad deal, all things considered. Once you're done playing a game, just send it back and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list, and if you really like the game you're playing, you can just click Keep It on the Gamefly website, and the game is yours at a discounted price. You can just keep it. You don't have to send it back. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. And if you're into the PC games, don't worry. Gamefly's unlimited PC play plan lets members play hundreds of PC games for free. Just hit up Gamefly.com Destructoid and we will hook you up with your very own 15-day free trial. Every sign up helps support the show and it helps you support your nasty video game habit. Again, that is Gamefly.com slash Destructoid for a 15-day free trial. Feed that habit. Mm -hmm. So, back to the show. Um, it has been almost two years since Devil May Cry, the, the reboot with the, the sexy Dante, was announced. And uh, fans of the series are still apparently quite pissy about it. On PlayStation's Japanese YouTube page, the likes and dislikes bar for the latest trailer is split almost evenly, but there are slightly more dislikes, which is which is pretty bad, all things considered. Look at that. Yeah. People really don't like it. They had to disable the comments. Um, I think the new version of Dante is just fine. He looks like uh, less like a cross between Bash the Stampede and Sephiroth, and more like an original character. Oh shit, did I just say that? <gasps> oh, brace yourself oh for dislikes. God. It's gonna look like a lightsaber. Oh no. So anyway, there's a new trailer, uh, as I mentioned, and it shows off a bunch of batshit insane demon hunting and has some wonderful, just grindy ass, angry teenager music playing in the background. Just like, just some heavy metal and, and Dante's like, uh, 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 swinging around, and there's, uh, there's swords and scythes and there's demons. And um, he's got this magic fist thing that's called Eric's. Uh, and he uses it as like a swing and it also does some magic tricks with, I, I love guess. his cape. It's a wacky video game. It's actually not a cape. It's like it's like a coat. It's like a really long no, track it's jacket. Cape. It's like a hoodie. It's a it's sexy like a, hoodie. It's a cape. So anyway, I'm actually really curious about the game. Most of the trailers and stuff we've seen have really highlighted the whole kind of violent, scary demon fighting, and they play the electric guitars. But uh, I could care less about that. However, the brief look I got at E3 and a few previews I've read, there seems like there's going to be a lot of goofy humor in there too. But of course, laughing is for casual gamers, and you will never sell a video game by showing how funny it could be. Unless you're Gearbox. Yes, exactly. 
Uh, how are those Borderlands 2 sales doing? Uh, pretty well, Probably. I think so. They yeah. haven't released numbers yet. Yeah. But So anyway, uh, DMC is headed to PS3 and 360 on January 15th in Europe and North America, just in time for Christmas if you don't know when Christmas is. Uh, as for the PC crowd, Capcom hasn't forgotten about you guys. Ninja Theory has outsourced the PC version of DMC to the Polish studio QLOC, or QLOC. Uh, they were the guys behind the PC versions of Resident Evil Raccoon City and Street Fighter Cross Tekken, so presumably that'll be out, you know, shortly after the console version. I think this game looks pretty good. Dante looks pretty hot, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it's, he's a sexy man. Hi, haters. Yeah. Hi. What's up? You mad? Why don't we, uh, <laughs> why don't we Let's take some, take Let's take some, some questions, questions or something, and then we can announce those contest winners. So two get people, your tweets in, Two people everyone. have disliked this live video and since the last time I looked at our dislike bar. Oh my god, it says 10 now. Yeah, it said wow. 8 before. People are really mad about there. Halo. What are, uh, what are people asking us here? All right, let's see. Um, with regards to DMC, Stuart Newsom said, he looks just fine to me. The reboot looks kind of fun to me. Race for Flames. Yeah. Everyone's scared to say they think it looks good, but it does. It looks like a really good game. Yeah, what, is, um, what does the Detoid crew think about open world Half-Life, asks John Perdue. I'm all about it. I, I think it could be really interesting. The thing yeah. is like, people have been waiting for this game so long, they have to do something really interesting and unique with it. Remember that and of time? course, people if they change it, people are gonna get mad, but if they make it like a solid experience, People won't, they won't have shit no. to say, you know? No, I mean, I just, remember that time Valve made that really crappy game? Exactly, so, you know, I'm, I have faith in them, you know? Alex know Rubens Alex says, Rubens. Half-Life 3 is Metal Gear Solid 5. That's the guy who we did the tattoos with. Yeah. Why is he watching our show? He's supposed to be writing articles about stuff. Yeah. What else we and got? And then, uh, let's see. Um, is, oh, John Perdue again asks, is Borderlands 2 as awesome as we all knew it would be? Um, have you not seen my review? What's wrong with you? Go watch I reviewed review. it, and not just me, Anthony, too. There's like 10, you can't not see our reviews if you're on the internet. Yeah. So go watch those. And also, by the way, we had a casual Friday come out this week. Max isn't in it, because he was parkouring in Boston. But it is there. Um, we invited our friend Nick Robinson, who is actually sending us questions right now on chat. He's cybering. He did, uh, he did casual Friday with us, and speaking of Valve, we talked about Valve hardware, and we kind of wildly speculated, which is one of my favorite things to do ever, which is why I have this job. Is a fun thing. Yeah, um, so you guys should go watch that. It's on our Rev3 Games channel. That is youtube.com slash Rev3 Games. Um, anything else here? Let's announce some contest winners. Oh, we got winners. some contest winners, Who won? actually. Um, Humble Indie Bundle winners, winners are RRAFZZ Rafz and Pariah164. So congratulations to you guys. We will send you a link through Twitter shortly where you can redeem your bundle. God, yes. that's such a cute word. Um, and a big thanks again to Tony G for hooking us up with these. You know, we try to do uh, contests on every Friday live show, and we typically rely on the generosity of publishers and developers for that. Um, but every so often, fans send us codes that they just have lying Which around and like that they don't need, and that is so thing. awesome. Yeah. So if you guys have anything sitting around that you don't want anymore, and, and you figure somebody else might have use for it, I guarantee you somebody else has use for it. So um, yeah, you can always send those to show at destructoid.com and hey, we'll, we'll plug your name while we're at it on the show. So it's a win-win for everybody. And That's on that a, note. <clears throat> yeah, what are you doing this weekend? I'm going to Vegas this weekend, actually right after the show. So if you guys want drunken pictures of my weekend or tweets about whatever the hell you'll be doing while your girlfriend is out of town. My girlfriend's in Jamaica. Yeah. I'm gonna be alone. She's gonna come back with a Jamaican an husband. I got Neon um, Genesis Evangelion, the box set. <laughs> I'll be crying a lot. Go follow us on Twitter. I am Tara Longest. He is Max Scoville. And together we are Detroit Show. It's good to have you back, Max. It's good to be back. High five. Anthony um, made me oil his chest. That's so before horrible. The show. I hate when he does that. He's yeah. always having us do that. You guys tune back here on Monday. We'll have another episode. We love you. Stay tuned. Have a good weekend. Don't kill anybody.